What's going on guys? Travis with RIC Garage and Innocent. Woo! What's going on guys? Travis with RIC Garage and in this episode, I'm getting a Pomax. Alright, what do we got here today? Our forklift. Ready to unload the new tool. Pomax. What's up, Rob? Yeah, yeah. How are we doing today? Doing alright. Ready to unload this beast? this out. P5, pull max. We're gonna make a lot of shit with this. Do you still think it's bigger than you thought? Uh, now that I see it. It's tiny, right? Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Alright, down a little bit. Yeah, if you can. Yep, yep. yep. You yep. can even come in a little bit. Uh, you can come down. All right guys, I'm pretty excited. I finally own a Pole Max. Um, don't know how to use it. Uh, don't know how to wire it up, but I gotta figure that out. Since I'm stopped, I don't have my dies yet and it's not hooked up. I want to mount my planishing hammer on the side of this to aid in, you know, my small shop. I need things to be compact. So, I took my mount. Jeez, I'm popular today. All right, so I screwed this to the back of some plate. And I am going to drill and tap the side of this and bolt it to here. So, I can use my planishing hammer right here. You'll see. So I got this now mounted. Hey, not very well, but it's mounted. Damn it. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay, all this work and I forgot to tighten the screws in the back. So I called a bunch of electric motor places and they all told me it was a waste of time and money to try to convert this from 440 to 443 phase to 220 single phase um, so probably gonna take their advice because I'm broke and just get a different electric motor for this a 220 single phase so I really don't have to do anything I just have to hook it up to the on off switch on the other side and put a plug on it and plug it into the wall all right so I'm gonna take the motor off and see what kind of shaft is coming out of this uh, to see about what kind of motor I need because I want to match the shafts if I can um, if not you know it, it is what it is but uh, let me take this off and we'll figure that out
871, which is what? So 22 mil shaft. So I need to find a European motor. Oh, this is gonna suck. I can make a motor plate that will bolt onto the frame. It'll be kind of like an L bracket. So the motor will sit here and then I'll get a piece of shaft, uh, turn it down. If I can't get 22 millimeters, I'll turn it down to 22 on each end, s blast a keyway in it. So I'll slip it in here and the shaft will come out through this plate because now these nuts won't be in the way of the motor. The shaft will come over here and then I'll have a coupling to go to the new motor and then the new motor will be here. And the coupling will have like, it'll be like a rubber coupling. So I'll have, I won't have any misalignment issues. If I do something wrong here, I can kind of be tweaked here and there. The rubber will take up the slack and uh, I'll pretty much just have a drive shaft right here. So I got this three horsepower, uh, 115 and 230 dual voltage motor. Uh, it's hooked up to 115 now. I'll verify it by opening this up and making sure the connections are connected to the low voltage. If it is, plug it in, see if it works. All right, we got it plugged in. Uh, test fire. All right, uh, I just got back from the store. I went to Lowe's and I went to my steel supply place. Um, I had them cut up some C-channel for me because I'm gonna make the stands on the Polmax bigger, raise it up 10 inches, and with the casters, it'll raise it up another four to eight inches depending on what casters I get. Uh, and that'll be a nice working height, kind of right at my chest so I can see everything, see what I'm doing. Because right now it's literally at crotch level and it's I'm gonna break my back and. It's not fun. So, got the steel for that. Also at Lowe's, got some supplies to wire it. So I got a two pole, 20 amp breaker. Uh, got some 5 16 18 nuts, 5 16 18 fully threaded screws. Cause I didn't have any, I had uh, partially threaded and I need full thread for what I'm trying to do. Also got some connectors. So, when this gets wired to high voltage, there's three wires that you just kind of connect to themselves. And I didn't want to just tie them with a wire tie. So uh, a buddy of mine that was an electrician told me to get these connections, crimp them onto the wire, put a nut and bolt through them, put rubber tape, then electrical tape. And you'd be all set. So following his lead, he apparently knows what he's doing. All right, you guys get a sneak peek up in the dungeon. I gotta run some wires. Run some wires. Ah, oh, look at this junk. Look at all this junk. All right, so, I just squirreled a wire away down in that corner there. And I hope it's showing on the first floor. Um, if not, I'm gonna have to try and shove it in some more, or I'm gonna pull it from the first floor and see if I can't get some of this, uh, this wire to poke through just enough to hook it up to the box, and then I'm gonna run it under these. I wish I didn't have so much crap up here, but I'll run it all the way and then put it through the ceiling, put my plug on it, and uh, I'll probably put a substantial cord on the machine so I can kind of wheel it where I want and still be able to plug it into the corner. There it is. Okay. That should be enough. Well, maybe a little more. Come down because I want to connect it to this. This here. I got a space right here. I'm going to add this guy here. And, uh, you know, the other side I'll hook my plug to. Either coming out there or over there, I'll have to drill a hole, I don't know. Well, let's figure that out. Let's run the wire and see where it ends up. Okay, so I got the wire dropped down to the box. It's not plugged in yet. I have, I, I got it through this hole. I fit it through, I pushed real hard, and uh, I got it hanging here now. 
So just gotta connect this guy to the end of this, and I'll have, no. I gotta connect this. I don't wanna hot prongs all over the place. Okay, I gotta plug this, hook this together. So this would be kinda hanging out all the time. Probably hanging up on the wall when I'm not using it, but or hanging on this little stand that they welded on. I don't know. Figure it out. But and then I'll take the other wire I got. Thickness. That's pretty long. So I'll have plenty if I need to say roll this when it has casters on it to the middle. Um I'll be able to do stuff in a big open area if I need to. It's got a long enough lead, so probably, I don't know, either weld the hook so I can hang the lead on it or, I don't know, hang it off of one of these eyelets for now. But I'll have a long whip on this so I can plug it in anywhere, even though this doesn't is this is not long. But this, I, I think this is going to stay here for the majority of the time, so I don't, I don't mind this being here. Got my lead from the box. Put the plug on my long whip that I'm going to use for the machine. Twist lock together. Nice, nice. So, now I just need to wire this into the motor after I mount it. So, for now, this can just get hung up. I need to drill and tap for the motor and, you know, do some fancy, fancy shaft magic to get this uh, 5.8 shaft working with a uh, 22mm shaft. But uh, McMaster car should be delivering something today and we'll get that sorted. Alright, so this is kind of what I'm going to do uh, with mounting the motor. So this is going to be the, the side of the Pulmax, and the motor plate is going to be in between these nuts. So this is going to lock it down. I'm going to have a washer or two in here. And then this will determine how far in and out of the, of the frame the motor is going to be to align with the hole for, you know, the gearbox and stuff. I don't know what to call it, but... So that means I need to do a little cleaning and uh, get whatever oil this is off of here uh, so I can get my motor sitting flat on the machine and mark out where I'm going to have to drill and tap the holes for that plate. And we got some more in the mail. Oh my god. Is this a joke? Why did I not cut this thing open enough? Jesus. Christmas. Ah. What the hell is that? That's stupid. I got a freaking mouse nest all over my... God dang shit! Okay. Number one. I uh, I found out I was getting that motor after I already ordered this stuff to put a new motor on with a 22 mil shaft. So that's why this came separate. Does this fit? Ooh, it fits. Okay. And that's why I have two of these with the 22 mil center. Please fit. Come on. Okay, there we go. That's awesome. Let's 
So hopefully now I have all the pieces to hook up and run the Pomax. Um, let's see. Should have the keyway from. Oh, I don't. Okay. Well, that stinks. I don't have the keyway from this motor. Dang it. I should have kept that. Okay. Well, I'm going to figure something out. I have to figure something out. Because I don't... The only thing I don't have right now is a keyway um, for the 5.8 shaft on my motor to this little piece here. This will do it. This will work. And this will attach to here... And motor goes in here. Spins. Bob your auntie. I don't like that though. I'm not a fan of this. So I'm taking the bearing off of this motor because I want to. I need to. Oh, I think I. I think I want to be more than I need to. Maybe I need to more than I want to. I don't know. But uh. I think I need to use it on my setup. So I'll show you what that's gonna look like. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, see? All right, so now I got a bearing in that hole, which is nice. Um. And this had this little retainer guy. Ooh, he's full of grease. So I guess I'll pack that bearing with the grease that's all over it. And, you know, carry on. Oh, yeah. Some good grease. Yeah, I guess when you use the stock stuff, um, it kind of works out. So... Since this is the stock flange and I didn't make my own flange, the bearing fit in fine. I had the bearing and it came with this little retainer that would hold it. So I'm going to send the screws from the back side into that little bearing. And that will hold my shaft. <laughs> that'll hold my shaft. No, that'll hold my shaft nice and... Nice and firm. That's what she said. All right, so since I, since I trimmed this down, um, it kind of looks weird. There's like a space. It, the bearing would have sat fully in this housing, but since I trimmed it down, it obviously doesn't fit, but it fit enough, so it'll work. So let me bolt this back up, slip the shaft through it, and uh, see how we're looking. Okay. All right, that's, that seems much better to me. All right, I'm missing a keyway for the coupling that goes on the motor and a square shank Craftsman screwdriver. Fits perfect. So I'm going to cut this down, cut a little piece off, and use this as a key. We got the piece of the screwdriver and the motor, so this fits right there. And this should, in theory, hey, would you look at that? That's kismet.
right, there she is. Don't make no squeaking noises while it's on there. We'll see uh, we'll see how it sounds when we turn it on, but I just need to get this hooked up to the other side. And uh, well, I'll unplug it, but before I plug it in, I'll uh, hook it up and we'll hear this baby run. It's wired from there, down to here, in. And then I have the plug. It's a long lead, comes up in the box, which this is a breaker, through here, out and into here that's wired for 230. Um, this switch is rated for 250 uh, volts, so this is, switch is fine. I'm gonna use that. Um, so yeah, pretty much just plug-in time. Uh, next, I want to, yeah, okay, turn that on, nothing happened, got a little scared, but that's fine, now we just flip the switch, whoa, okay, vibrate city, is it too fast? seems fast okay so a few issues here um, I cannot use this motor I need to get a different one free 99 was cool but it doesn't work uh, it's too fast it's running like 3500 rpms and it's just too fast I thought it was this connection so I wrapped some uh, rubber tape around it doesn't move anymore but it still vibrates like it doesn't vibrate like crazy but I don't it's just too fast that's just where I'm gonna leave it so this is what I'm doing for the stand it's kind of what they come on stock all right so this angle here 69 degrees this one is 111 so I'm gonna mark those out cut everything up and stick weld it together Alright, got all my pieces cleaned up. This is pretty much how it's going to look. These are the new stands for the Pullmax because it's just way too small. Um, so I'll cut, I'll cut the angles in them. Ground out this because the bandsaw, not that I can't cut this angle, but my hand is kind of tricky. So I just ground it out. Um, now I just got to weld it up. I think I'm going to use the stick welding attachment on my TIG welder and uh, stick these together. I might tack them with the TIG just to uh, get them aligned properly and then I'll uh, then I'll stick weld them because I haven't, I don't really stick weld ever so it's nice to practice.
right there they are two stands for the pull max they are pretty much equal did a pretty good job of leveling them out and making sure they were the same so I didn't do a terrible job stick welding I just you know nothing a the old grinder couldn't fix but I welded the inside as well as the outside so should be more than enough now I just gotta find out the uh, the hole centers like this here so I can drill those holes so when we lift this thing up and uh, slide these new stands under everything will be right with the world and the bolts will slip right in so say hi Stella say hi Stella say hi little fat butt Alright guys, that's it for this one. On the next video, I'm going to do kind of a history on this machine, what it is, how it works, more in depth on the machine. This video is kind of just getting it, making new stands for it. Um, still have yet to put the stands on because this thing is a beast. I'm going to need some help doing that. Um, like always guys, thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking the bell, notification, you know what to do. See you on the next one.